Hello and welcome to another edition of The Gadget Show. We're live from our studios in Manchester bringing you all of what's new, brand new uh, in the world of technology. Uh, so everything we've pulled from various parts of the globe and we've brought it together in a very simple, easy to watch program uh, where you can keep up to date with everything that's going on. You too can be an expert on all of that is technology, but you will never get close to our expert, which is uh, Raman, who makes this show work. Hi, Usman. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Got lots of uh, things for us this week? I sure hope, yes. We've got lots of things available with us today. Lots of things that are brand new. Obviously, we start the show with uh, what's new, what's going on in the world, rumors of what's upcoming. Uh, so what have we got this week? Yep. <clears throat> We've got lots of things, obviously, and uh, keeping in mind the time that we have, we can cover limited uh, big news. But I think some of the picks uh, that I've done this week is China Mobile, um, you know, world's largest mobile phone operator, uh, easily because of 600 million customers, and their ongoing battle with Apple. You know, that's one operator which has not taken or adopted the iPhone. And uh, after about five years of continuous talks uh, between the two companies, I think China Mobile will finally offer uh, you know iPhone to its users. The reason uh, they've not been able to offer that so far is because most of China Mobile's network is 2G and the new iPhone 3G 4S which is out uh, all supports uh, you know 3G and higher connectivity. Though it's an interesting fact to note that there are 15 million users who bought iPhone through different channels uh, in China Mobile and obviously using it you know they've uh, jailbroken the phone or whatever. But uh, once this comes on their network, I think Apple will score the biggest win. And that is where volumes for them hopefully would begin to happen in a country which has more than 800 million users. So the two other big bro operators, you know, China uh, Unicom and uh, I think China Unicom and China Telecom, um, you know, have been gaining market share over China Mobile. But China Mobile still controls 67% market share, 600 million users. That is what you combine, I would say, most, the entire Europe and US put together. 300, 300 million users, you have that in one country. So look at the mobile phone penetration and it's a big win for Apple if it finally happens. Yeah, because obviously that uh, would be a big factor for anyone joining a new network. Absolutely. For example, obviously, if, you're, if your network's not offering the iPhone and you want the iPhone, you are not gonna show any loyalty, are you? I you're gonna move s swiftly onto the competitors. So obviously it must have been losing market share they have been losing market that, share yeah. yes very correct they have been losing market share and obviously i think um, they've resisted taking the iphone because iphone they, they want apple to comply with some of their own uh, you know internal regulations of how apple treats data collects data from phone users which is what they don't want to be doing but I, i'm pretty sure that uh, with this news breaking out uh, that there is some sort of a compromise or at least the two you know big biggies are talking and they are on the table so there, there will be some good news for the customers quite soon. But it remains to be seen finally when and how will that happen. But I do think that with the rumors in the market and obviously you know blogs that you read, there is a new phone announcement which is eminent from Apple. And oh, I think that is what will actually uh, you know see a release of that going on to China Mobile. So maybe an iPhone 5 or whatever they decide to call it will be probably launched because it will be 4G and China Mobile's network is now being upgraded to 4G. So that is something which will complement in terms of tech, doing away with technological barriers and also making it a big launch for Apple within China, even for China Mobile for that sake, because that is one phone which is dominating the world uh, as far as users are concerned, the markets are concerned, and they don't have it, they don't offer it. So it's so a big win-win win situation for both. Uh, parties, to be honest, so I think so. Yes, a lot of money to be made there. Even oh. more money to oh, be yes. made for Apple. <laughs> Absolutely, I think that's one of the reasons why they're expanding their retail presence in China as well. And um, at some point in time, we will get this. You know, we, I think we will get to see that being offered on uh, their network. All right, moving on. The second big, big big news is, you know, when we consider mobile phones and we consider making calls, there is one place that you can think of that you can't make mobile phone calls. And that is when you're on a plane, right? Hopefully that will b become a reality with Virgin Atlantic becoming the first carrier in, uh, you know, in, in Britain to start offering that facility soon. But uh, there will be some limitations and I think there have been testings of this which have already happened in the US, but the US Federal uh, you know, Aviation Authority 
basically bans the use of mobile phones while you're in uh, US aerospace. But I think transatlantic flights soon from Britain to the US will start seeing this happening. Um, wh whatever I was able to glean through some of those websites, you know, on this news was that uh, it will be restricted to six calls, uh, you know, six users making calls. And obviously there will be a charge that you'll pay either a roaming charge or a fixed fee uh, because a lot of flights uh, and, you know, operators um, over the years have experimented with Wi-Fi. You can make, uh, you know, phone calls to the phone via the cloud. You can make Skype calls, but actually making telephone calls through your mobile uh, it remains to be seen, you know, it needs to be a reality. And I think technology has now advanced wherein they will start offering this on some of the flights. And you will get to see probably, you know, as, as many as about 20 of their aircrafts having this capability by, uh, you know, beginning of it's, next year. It's just a matter of time, really, isn't it, I where agree. everyone's going to catch up. We've got a caller. Okay. So we're going to take a call. Hello. I think we're having a bit of difficulty with that one. We'll get them back in. Uh, maybe they were getting on a flight. We're not sure. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's just a matter of time. I guess so, um, yes. I think Emirates is the only one in the world which offers Wi-Fi at the moment. That's correct. Um, I think somewhere I read it's going to cost you about a pound a minute to make a call and about 20p for a text. So they're obviously still charging a premium for it, but I do think it's going to have to become the norm uh, where people, everything, like we always discuss on this show, everything you control, everything to do with your work, you, the, whatever you do is going to end up on your phone. And if you're on a long flight, six, seven, eight hours, some people can't afford to be without it. That's so um, everyone is going to have to catch up, I think. I'm pretty sure on that. And this is one technology, obviously, something when you travel business class, when you're work, traveling for work, this is one thing that you hate doing, which is switching off your phone while boarding and, you know, uh, deplaning. And obviously, when during takeoffs and landing. But I, I sure hope the technology will catch up soon and you'll get to see this uh, being a reality. The other thing is, when you look at Wi-Fi access, now with a lot of devices now available, if I look at four years back, three years back, I don't think there were devices available which could last in terms of battery life for a 10-hour flight. And second, did offer you that content. You know, for example, tablets which have come out. You know, laptops I can understand, but you have most of your own data on it. You're going through your presentation, emails, and stuff like that. But when you look at tablets as a category, they've opened up a plethora of uh, possibilities. So you are connected through the internet on Facebook, Twitter, you know, social networking, also looking at you know other things that you're doing while surfing the net. And this is one thing which has been really missing out on an experience. When you're on a long flight, and you have 10, 12 hours of it, you can watch movies, you can do a bit of uh, you know, in-flight shopping. Uh, and apart from that, what you do? You sleep. But I think with tablets and a couple of other devices not offering the content, it is becoming important that this is something which becomes a feature. Even at a slight bit of price, you know, $10, or like you mentioned, Emirates, for example, charges for usage of Wi-Fi charges about $10. Uh, during the flight for an hour or so. But that brings it uh, in terms of a reach of a lot of users. So it's affordability at, um, at the end of the day. And if you want it, you you know, you you have it. And uh, that, that that is something, I don't know, but I'll find out. This is something which just, just crossed my mind is that there should be a statistics which should uh, give us some data and numbers in terms of at any given point in time, there are how many users who are on a flight, you know, across the globe. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure there must be some, uh, you know, at least a good one or two million. Well, I'll find out and we'll yeah, share that with our users. Your, yeah. Any point during. I, I agree with you, yeah. So I think it is going to be an add-on feature. The third thing that I picked up is obviously we, we talk about phones quite a lot. We talk about internet quite a lot. And obviously the reason why when you look at the gadget show, you know, there are news and uh, news and bits of pieces that we pick up on the gadget show uh, are related to mobile is because that is really the next computer. And that is one device that you don't leave your house with. Uh, you know, you don't leave uh, without that device. So we've made similar analogies in the past that you had to have a watch and your wallet and things like that, but that is what your mobile is today. And uh, when you look at that, the sale of mobiles, you know, the total volume being sold by the biggies, the f top five vendors in the world has exceeded 1.3 billion phones a year. And when you look at that, we've got a graph that we want to show to our users is that there have been companies that we thought of are quite big. You know, when you talk about uh, for example, Nokia, which used to be a clear market leader with 40% market share in the last 10 years, has really dwindled away from the first position to, I would say, you know, number four, number five, even number six. 
and the, the number one vendor today in the market is Samsung. And it's all because the smartphones on Android are doing much better than the ones which were on Symbian from Nokia, for example, or any other proprietary operating system. The second is, when you look at market share wise, obviously is Nokia. The third is Apple. I don't know whether this graph is clearly visible on the screen, but the third one is uh, Apple. And that is a major, major jump from, you know, from nowhere in the last five years. They didn't even have a, you know, a history of handset. And five years back when they launched the first iPhone, today in five years, they've become the number three handset vendor in the world. And it's a significant single, single digit market share at about 8%. And when you look at that, um, <clears throat> I'm looking at the chart that I have in front of me. After that, you have ZTE, which is a Chinese handset manufacturer, and then you have LG. So you have the five top ones, and you see BlackBerry nowhere in the top five. It has been immensely popular with business users. But you know, in terms of market share, when you look at it's gone down to seven in, in terms of volume. And you have the Chinese vendor because of the growing base of Chinese population using mobile phones. You have ZTE and Huawei, which have you know sprung up and they're selling handsets by the million. So the next battle where you had Intel and Microsoft combination across the globe working as Wintel, I think the next combination where you'll get to see the battles happening is content and mobile phone. So this is a significant story, and we've seen that there has been a slight dip in terms of sales, 2% or so, but in terms of the sheer volumes that it is selling, the market is looking at in excess of a, of a billion phones. And out of that, 420 million phones are smartphones. So the ones that we have, like the iPhone, you know, like the HTC, or BlackBerry, or you say, you know, the Samsung Galaxy, or the HTC, uh, you know, the LG, Android, and the LG Transformer one which they've launched, uh, you'll get to see more and more of these getting out there and the screens becoming bigger. So the Samsung Galaxy as we covered last, last week which was launched on May the 3rd, shipping on May 22nd, has a 4.5 4 inch screen. So the screen size has been steadily increasing and that goes to show that people are comfortable getting data on the mobile phones, whether it's emails, you know, social networking, browsing the internet, Whatever it is, you're comfortable doing that on a phone which has a good screen size. So yeah, that does seem to be the future. Um, we've got some more, lots more coming up in fact, um, but after a very short commercial break, don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Gadget Show. Um, this is my right. iPad. As we know, everything's is connected to your the internet. Your flipboard is your personal magazine. There's so much information, there's so much data that's that available to us. There's about. so many interests that we have. There's so many apps which can cater to this. Um, so rather than checking seven or eight different websites to get all the news and all the features, like for example, me, obviously I like to keep up to date with what's happening with the gadget world. I'm a very avid sports fan. Um, you know, I like a bit of boxing, football, cricket, things like this. Um, rather than me having to download five or six apps, rather than me having to check five or six websites, there are certain apps out there which will condense everything that you like to your personal taste all into one. We're going to talk about one particular app uh, in this case, which does that job and it does it in a very unique way. Um, as some of you may be aware, there are many apps out there which rely on RSS feeds, uh, such as uh, Google Reader, Reddit, etc., etc., which obviously you subscribe to certain websites, and all, as the information's updated, you become aware of this on your phone. But this particular app, which Roman's going to tell us about, um, puts it all in a rather unique format. I totally agree, and uh, I think, I'll be honest here, I've stumbled onto that ad uh, you know, the app, sorry, 
um, you know, just out of um, accident because I was looking for something else on the iPhone that I use. And then when I wanted to integrate everything, you know, in terms of my Facebook feeds, my Twitter feeds, I look at, uh, you know, news, business news, uh, looking at some shares and, uh, and things like that. And I wanted all that to come on to one particular screen. So I don't have to launch a lot many applications. And when I did a quick, you know, search of the apps on the iPhone, on the App Store, I came across this app which is called the Flipboard. And I am really impressed with it. And wh what it says on the description is, I will read that aloud. It basically says, cutting out the marketing jargon, it says, you know, Flipboard creates personalized magazine out of everything being shared with you. The best thing which I like about it is that if I have 300 odd friends on Facebook and you know 400 odd people following me on Twitter, everything that my friend tweets or your family tweets or you know anything that you and your friends share actually comes in as a feed onto this particular app and it all comes onto one nice screen. I think the reason we, why they've named it Flipboard is as if you are flipping a magazine you know, or a newspaper or anything that you're reading, for example, a book, it just mimics that on your on your screen. Now, officially, when I go, went onto the website, obviously it asks you to create an account, and uh, you know, then once you have an account, you can actually share it on any sort of device. So for example, you can access it through the iCloud, go onto the iPad, and obviously the iPhone. The website does say that you know the Android are coming soon, but when I did a quick search of that on YouTube, I do see that the Flipboard video of uh, the Android version is actually available and it shows you that. So we, what we are going to do is obviously give you a live demo of this app. But before this, I picked up a small video, which is something which I liked on the website and it kind of defines what this app is. And I think for all of you who like getting everything, you know, in terms of your news, your new social feeds, um, you know, your technology, and anything that you are connected in that you're interested in reading, it gets everything onto one dashboard. And this is something that I think a lot of us uh, would, would probably download. Having looked at the app and the reviews, the reviews are excellent, but I don't see a lot many downloads which have happened or on the YouTube when you look at the number of hits the video has got. It's probably got about you know, 80, 85,000 hits, but it has been named as the I, as I can read it, uh, at least it says that the Flipboard was named the Apple's iPad app of the year and also one of the Times, Time Magazine's top 50 innovation when they look at you know, the uh, social networking apps which brings everything onto one dashboard. So we'll play a quick video for you that you can see on screen which actually defines what the app does and gives you a very good uh, you know, background in terms of what it is capable of. This is my iPad and this is my Flipboard. Your Flipboard is your personal magazine. It always has content you care about. And it knows what you care about because Obviously it knows because what your they've friends introduced are. something for the iPad. This is all stuff my Twitter friends are on their website that is the articles and images they, they think I should see. Your Flipboard connects to your social networks and gathers all the good stuff your friends are sharing. Any type of content your friends can share. Articles, images, photo albums and video. They all come to you. And you can always handpick from Flipboard's own collections, from some of the most interesting sources on the web. I know I can always find something good in Flip Tech, for instance. And your Flipboard updates when your friends do, so you're never at a loss for something to look at. And because your Flipboard is already connected to your social networks, you can share and reply from right there within the app. While your friends do the work of sharing the good stuff, your Flipboard collects it all in one incredible place. You'll always have more good stuff waiting next time you open it. It's your magazine. It's your Flipboard. The stuff you care about all in one place. All right, and I'm going to show you a live demo of how it looks like on the iPhone. You know, I've downloaded this app. Um, after you sign in onto your Flipboard, and you, it creates a, some sort of a dashboard for you. So what I've done is, as you can see on the left-hand side, I have Facebook. On the right-hand side, I have Twitter. Then it gives you its personalized, uh, you know, uh, things of the, you know, the Flipboard picks. I've added business, I've added sports, and I've added, uh, you know, obviously I've left these styles. Now the best thing about it is when I touch it, say so for example, if I go onto Facebook, it starts bringing in news, you know, straight away from Facebook. Yes, if you can see that properly, uh, yeah, there you go. 
So, you know, for example, somebody has tweeted, Xavi and Iniesta, you know, have assisted, blah, blah, blah. It's football news that I've subscribed to. And then you go on to Twitter, and you can see Twitter, uh, you know, feeds coming in. And basically, as you flip through, you can read any tweet which has been put in by my friend or, you know, anybody who's following me. And you can straight away get everything very nicely organized coming across onto your, uh, onto your flipboard. And it's quite, the interface is quite good because it flips. You read the story, you read the snippet, and it flips. You know, just flick off a button, uh, you know, your finger basically moves it to the next uh, uh, particular thing. You go back from Twitter, and then you go back on, say, for example, business news. So today's business news, when you look at, you know, stocks down as Europe overshadows US, blah, blah, blah. And then again, read that story, and then you go on. So it gives you the snippets that you're interested in. Obviously, if it catches my eye, and I want to look at, you know, reading this news. For example, US 30-year mortgage rate falls to a record 3.79. Okay, that's a news that I'm interested in reading. And then I click on it, and I start reading, and it pops up and gives me a lot of options. They are tying up with a lot of publishers, and obviously, as the publishing increases, you will get to see a lot many channels being integrated. So currently, they have LinkedIn, you know, um, uh, Google feeds coming in, news feeds coming in, and then you can integrate that onto one particular board. Let me show you how this is configured. So for example, I've created a profile, cover stories, timelines, all my photos. I can go on to Inside Flipboard, go back for a moment, and that's how it starts. So you know, your Flipboard, your account this week, and then you can add things to your favorite. For example, I've added only business news, and then I can add audio and video. The next big thing that they've introduced in Flipboard is audio. For example, now most of these are, you're reading them, you know, it's for reading. And then it's got some integrated readers in it, so it makes it easier for you to read. But addition, the addition of audio and video gives it a whole new dimension. You know, so you can actually see videos which have been tweeted. You can see pictures which have been tweeted. And obviously, if there's an audio or a podcast that has been tweeted or, you know, that, that's on Facebook or on LinkedIn, you can straight away dive in and pick that story up from that particular, uh, you know, moment. And then you can add a lot of channels. So um, there is a good amount of selection available from entertainment, sports. You want something local. It's able to pick up your location. So obviously, uh, using the Mashable location-based technology, and it allows you to pick in, bring in feeds, news, content that you want from in and around your city. So something quite, quite, um, I would say good. Um, it's worth trying. If, if you are one of the users who likes getting things in one place, then obviously this is something that uh, you, you should have on your phone. The best thing is it's free. The app is free. So I liked it because obviously I don't need to go on to you know, different things, diff launch different applications. One sm smart board kind of a thing gets me everything on my, on my phone when I launch this particular application. And the other thing which obviously I mentioned was uh, when you look at, we've got some new phones that we're going to do a review next week on, but Flipboard for Android currently on their website says is not available. But uh, when I got, went on to YouTube, you know, I could pick up a video which basically clearly shows that, you know, that it is being introduced and, uh, you know, users have started uh, you know, looking at it. There you go. See it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Look there, everybody. It's Flipboard on Android. Finally, how about that? So they've kind of <laughs> halfway announced it today, but right now it is exclusive on the Samsung Galaxy S3, and we're going to take it for a little spin here. There you go. This is, if you haven't seen it, kind of, uh, it started out some really good. So again, one of the apps, it's got Instagram, it's got Facebook, it's got Twitter, LinkedIn, everything integrated, and they are adding more and more publishers which will be able to pull in all the news and bring it to one single uh, screen. And one of the point which I would probably like to you know, relate to this particular app is that today, developing applications on different platforms is one big business. And there are companies, as we spoke about, you know, Instagram, for example, got sold for uh, to Facebook. Facebook bought it for about $1 billion. $1 billion, yeah. Three-year-old company, 70 employees. Look at the net worth, you know, $1 billion divided by 70. 